Subhanallah, Allah. as we said yesterday, ayam and ma'adudat, limited days, numbered days, days that we can count, really, subhanAllah, that are passing by very quickly. The question is, my dear brothers and sisters, have we taken advantage of the past half of Ramadan, and will we take advantage of the upcoming half? We're in either in one of two categories. Some of us, alhamdulillah, Rabbi Ameen, have been working very hard for the past 15 days, so my message to you is very simple, please continue what you're doing, and make it uh, more, inshallah. And then for the rest of us who haven't been doing uh, as much as they want and as much as they should, and as much as they feel that they want to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that they want to gain as much reward as they can in this beautiful month of Ramadan, I want to tell you that it's not too late. Uh, yes, half of Ramadan is over, but don't think of the past, think of the present and think of the future. You have an opportunity beginning right now, my dear brother and my dear sister, to take advantage of the beautiful month of Ramadan and the best days within this month which are the last 10 days where ta'ala one of those nights is Laylatul Qadr uh, the night of power or whatever we call it uh, depending on uh, the translation is still something that you can grasp so I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my dear brothers and sisters to allow us ta'ala to live until the end of Ramadan and to do our best even if we haven't been doing enough in the past let us focus and let us renew our intention. Let us make tawbah that we did not follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commandments in the past part of Ramadan. And let us focus on the future of Ibn uh, Tonight, my dear brothers and sisters, we're talking about a new topic. Yesterday and the day before, I was joined by Sheikh Ibrahim Zidan. And tonight, Alhamdulillah, for, th- for the third day in a row, we are joined by Sheikh Ibrahim. We received a lot of phone calls yesterday and a lot of phone calls the day before. We were able to take about half of them. So I apologize for the brothers and sisters who we weren't able to take their calls. Please, inshallah, give us a call tonight and uh, we'd love t- for you to join us, inshallah. Uh, the phone number is 002 248 or 249. 002 or 248 or 249. Or of course, through Skype at Huda underscore TV. As we talk, my dear brothers and sisters, about getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and every night taking a step, or as we said, really taking a leap closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm scared of something. I'm scared, my dear brothers and sisters, that we talk about these topics and you do start implementing them. And you do get, inshallah, with uh, good intentions, the good intentions that you have a lot of good deeds for being good to your parents, for uh, becoming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for taking the, the disease of the fear of poverty out of your heart, as we talked about in one of the episodes, for being nice to your relatives, for uh, making a balance between deen and dunya, for awakening yourself and not being in a state of heedlessness, as we talked in previous episodes, and all the things that we talked about. I'm scared that you actually do these things, and you get a lot of good deeds, but you come on the Day of Judgment, and you don't see any of these good deeds. Even though you did get them. I'm not talking tonight about sincerity, about doing them with bad intentions or doing them to show off or without even taking an intention. No, I'm saying you were sincere in your actions and you said I'm going to change myself in whatever topic we talked about and you started doing good deeds. But you come on the Day of Judgment and you see that you have no good deeds in your scale of good deeds. And on the other hand, you see that you have a lot of bad deeds in your scale of bad deeds. And you had the expectation, bi'idhnillah ta'ala, that your good deeds with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would take you to Jannah and you find yourself otherwise. And you find yourself in big trouble on the Day of Judgment and maybe, who knows, in Jahannam. Because of the one thing that we're talking about tonight, my dear brothers and sisters. Our tongue, our tongue. Specifically, the great sin of backbiting. A person would come on the Day of Judgment with a lot of good deeds and would lose all these good deeds simply because he spoke badly about someone else. Or simply because that person backbit that other person, or did some sort of injustice to them. See, when we think of injustice, we don't necessarily think of what we say. We often think of what we do. I did injustice to such and such person. But you can do injustice to another person, whether that person uh, is a brother or a sister, or a young person or an old person, or a friend or an enemy, by your tongue. By your tongue. You can do injustice. And that person can take from your good deeds on the day of judgment by what you did with your tongue. 
So tonight, my dear brothers and sisters of Sheikh Ibrahim Zidane, we want to talk about the tongue and we want to talk about the grave sin of backbiting. Something that I'm sure you've heard about many times, but something that even though we know about a lot, we often forget it a lot. Especially in the month of Ramadan where, alhamdulillah, I mean, it's a great thing that we gather with a lot of people, whether it's at the masjid, whether it's in our local communities in the west, whether it's with our relatives uh, in the east or wherever you are in the world. But even though that is a good thing that we're meeting with people and we're discussing, we're having conversations, it is really a big room for backbiting. So, uh, Sheikh Ibrahim, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Our tongue, no. our tongue um, can either be a blessing or a curse. And as the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said in the Sahih Hadith, whoever can guarantee for me whatever is between his jaws, no. which is the tongue, and whatever is between his legs, which is the private part, no. I guarantee Jannah for him. No. And tonight we're talking about one step closer. No. We're talking really about the guarantee. Right. Half of that guarantee is guaranteeing our tongue. No. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah. MashaAllah, you state it beautifully that uh, it's, not a just, it's not just about doing good deeds. It's about guarding and saving ourselves from doing bad deeds. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything in our bodies as a way to test us. And one of which this tongue that never gets tired whatsoever. We can talk the whole day and the whole night. And every single word that we say, it's either going to be in the balance of the good deeds or the bad deeds. So just being watchful of what we say, because the effect of the word is as severe, sometimes it's even worse than the physical uh, you know, strike with a hand, for example. So that's why this is a major sin. Backbiting is a major sin. We need to know what it means. We need to know why sometimes we backbite and we want to backbite. And also we, we want to know how to uh, repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from it and how to be steadfast in being away from uh, backbiting and talking with, uh, about others in an evil way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our tongues. You know sometimes uh, this happens a lot in the conversation. I'm sure you've heard it a lot. Um, someone is talking about a person mm -hmm. and he's saying, you know, uh, I'm talking about such and such and this person is such and such, but I'm not really backbiting. I don't right. mean to backbite this person. Right. So we're given excuses for right. our own selves. Right. Actually, the excuses are, are from two different types of excuses. One of which a person would say, I would say that to him in front of his face. Yes. Right? Another thing is, there is exceptions for backbiting. And people get to learn that very much, mashallah, which is a good thing to be uh, for a Muslim to and learn. We'll talk about them tonight, right. mashallah. But exceptions are exceptions, yes. not the norm. Right? It's not the general rule. Right. So, what is, what is ghibah? What is backbiting? Is as the Prophet uh, said clearly in the hadith, ذِكْرُكَ أَخَاكَ بِمَا يَكْرَهَ And that's it. Hmm. That when you mention your brother, with something that he dislikes. Even if it's true? Even, actually, if it's true, this is ghibah, this is, this is backbiting. The companions, عنهم, by the mercy of Allah, they asked that question. Mm. They said, O Prophet of Allah, if what I say about my brother is true, is present in him. The Prophet ﷺ said, if you talked about your brother by something that is present in him, فَقَدِقْتَبْتَ This is what ghibah is all about. This is what backbiting is all about. You had committed the major sin. But if you say something that is not in him, you committed what is, what is worse, and that is فَقَدْ بَهَتَّهِ That means you did the slandering or the buhtan, mm. which is the worst sin. When you say something about your brother or about a sister that is not present in them, and they would hate that. So both ways is too evil, that a person is falling in one or the other. Zakallah khayyim. Brother Hakim from Ghana, Assalamu alaikum. How are you doing? Mm-hmm. I uh, have a student, a uh, student nurse who is trying to pursue my education. And in Ghana, it's very common if you have to pursue unless you go through loan with interest. That would enable you to pursue your career. And mm. with family issues here and there, even is not an option, as far as Ghana is concerned, except from family and others. You have to help the family with more than you are earning. So at the end of the day, the only option for you is to go for the loan. With the interest, so that after your completion, then you pay it gradually. And I'm asking in terms of civil for knowledge, is it permissible economically? If not, with this family pressure here and there, will we say is the trade that that's where Allah has permitted you to be? Zakhawah Khain, Warakhawah Fi. Shaykh Ibrahim. Warakhawah Fi. Student loans, right? Uh, loans with interest is haram, is a major sin. Mm. And whoever fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is dutiful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make ways out for the person. 
So put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if your even your studies are delayed a little bit, it's okay. Uh, Muslims need to seek ways of halal uh, sources of helping the students of, and so on. Uh, and if not, then we have to be patient with the orders of Allah. And definitely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would replace it by something better. Instead of finishing in four years, if you can finish in eight years, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless it for you. But uh, there is no excuse when it comes to this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. No. Going back to the issue of backbiting. No. What is, where is the, the origin of the word, the word backbiting? al ghiba no. In, no. in the Arabic language, where did that come from? Uh, al ghiba comes from something like from the word al ghaib, for example, which is unseen. Mm. Something that a person would uh, talk about something that is not present. We're talking about a Muslim brother. We're talking about a Muslim that is not present. We're talking about him. Either we will talk something evil or something good. If it's something good, mashallah, there is no problem. Mm. But if it's something bad, either it's true or it's a lie. If it's true, it's a major sin, it's backbiting. If it's a lie, it's worse, and that is the buhtan. That means any time we talk about a Muslim in an evil way, it's not permissible whatsoever, unless, again, there is exceptions. So uh, this is what basically al riba is. Even some of the ulama, they said with the explanation of the hadith, when you mention uh, your brother with something that he doesn't like, they said even in front of his face, that is considered to be riba, although that he is in front of you. But uh, who said that it's permissible for us to say things that is bad to a Muslim in front of his face? You know, this is something also that we have to protect the honor and the dignity of the Muslim. It doesn't mean that we don't advise one another, enjoying good, forbidding evil, warning others from uh, people that do evil. Uh, again, this is the exception that we need to talk about. Mm. But the norm is there is sanctity and honor for the Muslim that we have to protect that and never to talk about something that they would dislike even if it's present in them. Whether it's a physical feature, whether it, it doesn't have to be even a word. A person can say or do a, a, a gesture with his face that makes the other person think bad of that person that they mention his name. I would mention Brother Mustafa, for example, right? Uh, you mentioned Brother Mustafa, right? Mm. And I would say, I would do something with my hand. Mm. That means what? That means he's no good. Or I can even say a good word. I can say, may Allah guide us all. SubhanAllah, it sounds nice that we're making dua mm. to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah guide us. But you understood from that statement that means he is not in the form of guidance. This is backbiting. Mm. So it's a very dangerous thing. We have to purify our heart and make sure that we only say what is good. Brother Dawood from the UAE, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. How are you, sir? Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Ameen. How are you, brother? Fine, thank you. Um, I have a question, actually. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I wanted to know, um, like, um, I wanted to, like, uh, get myself into uh, property, like, real estate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like, I will build a house and perhaps I sell it. Maybe I'm going to add some interest on top of it. And then adding the interest and perhaps selling it to somebody who doesn't have maybe all the amount to buy, it, you know, at the same time. Is it permissible to perhaps he pays half of the money and then the rest he can pay later? Is it allowed this way? Okay. Just to go back to the to the river subject. Uh, sure. Coming back to the river, I, I mean, I did change my clothes from <laughs> yesterday, so I'm not sure what uh, right. what the deal is. I'm just joking, brothers and sisters. Yeah. If you have questions about any subject, feel free to give us a call. Inshallah, we're here with you live. And uh, at the end of the day, the purpose of this program is to benefit our brothers and sisters about the topics that they need the most. Right. If the brother he has his own business and he's building uh, the place, he's the owner, right? And he's selling it to others and he wants to take payments. Uh, so a person will give him half and then the other half on installments. Mm. There's no harm in this whatsoever as long as you can draw a straight line between the buyer and the seller. seller. There's no finance uh, you know, uh, entity that comes in between. The buyer and the seller, they're the ones that are buying to the person half and then the half or whatever the, they agree upon. And there's no harm in increasing the price but with a fixed price, one price only that they would agree upon when they're sitting discussing. They can say if it's cash money, it's a thousand. If it's installments, it's going to be two thousand. Which one would you agree? He said the two thousand. Once they agree to that price, there is nothing whatsoever that would make it increased. Even if he's late in the payment, it's only one price, one sale price, and installments. Mashallah, there's no harm. Uh, there's no penalty fees. It's between the buyer and the seller. 
uh, absolutely no problem whatsoever inshallah ta'ala back to back biting back to back biting, no. back to back biting. No. Uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a very graphic explanation in the quran about no. the person who backbites his brother it is really like the 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 eating of the dead flesh of a person no i mean imagine just eating the flesh of a human being now imagine eating the dead flesh of that human being no. to be honest we all know this ayah no. i'm sure a lot of uh, the brothers and sisters I, i mean only maybe five percent of our brothers and sisters are hearing this for the first time but why do we continue backbiting when we know these facts no why because it's something that is in our nafs in our being that this is the way for a human being to elevate himself this is how some people think to step over someone it'll get you higher right this is definitely a wrong concept but it makes the person feels good mm. when you when you put someone down that means you're better than him that means you're superior that means you're righteous and he is evil and so on and so forth Uh, it, so it serves some form of the greed that is present in the human being and we need to fight that and this is present in each and every one of us we need to fight that by seeking rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and protecting ourselves but the verse inshallah ta'ala you know later on we want to talk about it because it's it's a reality it's not just a metaphor it's a reality as mentioned in some of the hadith of the prophet mm -hmm. sallallahu alaihi wasallam yeah i think we, if we link it between the the hadith uh, you really uh, you're right it's not a graphic metaphor or a simile you know it's it's really literal right right okay right. we'll talk about it inshallah if you take a call from brother yusuf from nigeria assalamu alaikum brother wa alaikum assalam good evening good evening brother Uh, but I think my question is, I'm engaged in business. Yeah, I, I can hear you. Go ahead, Brother Yusuf. I'm engaged in business. So I usually, I usually purchase goods in credit. But that, it can be some news. But by now, I don't know. I don't know. He has given me a lot of credit. I don't know the, uh, the really amount that I did. So I don't know. I don't know the really amount that I did. So that I'm owing him. So I don't know in this case how, it, how it's going to be rich. Because I don't know what to pay him. And he also don't know. He don't know. The amount that I'm owing him, so that's why I need a bank man. So you you don't know the amount that that you're owing them, the bank? Yeah, no, and he also don't know. And and the and, oh, the person doesn't know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so basically you borrowed money from someone, but you don't remember yeah. how much you owe him, and he doesn't remember how much you owe him, also, right? Yeah, yeah, inshallah. Okay, inshallah, we'll try, we'll try to find a solution for that, mm -hmm. inshallah. Um, if it's, mashallah, it's, a, it's an easy matter. They need to get together mm. and agree together on some amount, you know, that um, it's on a safe side that this is basically the amount of money that they think uh, that they would agree with each other that this is the amount of money that is left. And then he can pay that back, mm. right? Uh, something that they know for sure that at least this, Right, and the other person should forgive if it's more than that, and with forgiveness and with you know being together with that, since there's no witnesses, there's no contract, then things has to be done this way. But they shouldn't be cancelled whatsoever. It should be done, but with matters of forgiveness and be lenient. Mm. Inshallah, ta'ala. I love how you answer these questions. Um, you, you always go back these types of questions. Always go back to the origin of the situation. So let's take advantage of of this question and go back to the origin of the situation. I guess uh, the original problem is not that they forgot. Uh, yeah. forgot the amount the original problem is that they didn't write a contract right so uh, so, so as we know t even if they're two muslim brothers you yeah. know or best friends right. they have to write a contract right. between them right. tell us more about this contract this is something that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the longest verse in the quran ayatu al-dayn ya ladina amanu idha tadayantum bi dayn ila ajal musamma faktubu if you take a loan write it down it is not about that you don't trust the other side it's not about that whatsoever some people they feel uncomfortable they would say you don't trust me you want me to sign on the paper you get me in trouble later on it's not about that what if the two parties may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbid they die right after they sign the contract they go out and somebody dies then there is rights for the inheritors mm -hmm. who's going to know that who's going to remember that so people need to document these things just to save the rights and according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us in the Quran and one of the complications of that is what we heard people forget yes so and then rights are being abused and so on and it, and it's means for the shaitan to get into between the people and cause enmity between them and that shows the perfect system that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to follow yeah. we asked brothers on the street what they thought about the issue of backbiting and what are the main causes of it so inshallah my dear brothers and sisters let's take a look and we'll come back we'll continue talking about the subject and we'll take more of your phone calls with me
I am just a simple man trying hard to understand. The biggest problems we see in other people are problems which uh, lie within ourselves. And I think a, a, pro a big problem and a, a fundamental rising of backbiting is that we have that many faults in ourselves and we cover this up by speaking badly about other people. I think it's because we have like personal issues, we have like uh, with our complex, with our, you know, if you are mad somebody or somebody said something to us, you know, we are doing the same thing. So we're not forgiving, we're not like, you know, we're not doing what the Quran says. And I, think it's, I think it's because people don't uh, think about it. You know, they just talk and talk and talk and Shaitan is talking for them. And they don't think that it's a big sin. They don't have the knowledge that it's actually a big sin. And when you do it, you, you'll give all your, your good, uh, what you did, you'll give it to him, the one you're backbiting. So they don't know that. We should know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala watching us all the time. And we should choose, I'm going to please Allah or please, you know, human. People do not have peace. They do not live in harmony in the society. So the society will not be in peace. The society will not be in harmony. Lord, I am just a simple man trying hard to understand. Beautiful thoughts, mashallah. I especially liked uh, the people emphasized on the point that many times when we backbite other people, it's really because of an underlying condition within our own selves. No. It's true. And that's why if we just have a little bit of fairness, we won't backbite one another. Because we know that we have more faults than the person right. we're backbiting. We, we know ourselves more than knowing anyone else. Mm. And if we really reflect upon ourselves, we have so much faults. So why should we focus on others? There's a beautiful hadith of the Prophet He said, alayhi salatu wasalam, in ahadakum la yubsir al qadha fi ayni akhi, wa la yubsir al jada'a fi ayni. Which means one of you, this is the fact of the human being, can see the smallest uh, you know, piece of dirt in the eyes of your brother. But he cannot see the trunk of the tree in his own eyes. Mm. So he can see the small fault right. in his brother's eyes and he can't see the huge fault that's within himself. Right. And that's why uh, actually on the other side, when you are backbited, don't just take it as somebody hurted you, take the good side of it. Mm. Maybe it's true that he did some, say something bad about you that you need to change. The evil and the sin is on him. But we benefit from that on the, on the personal level that we can really change and avoid being, uh, you know, the early generations of Islam, they used to benefit from the words of their enemies. Mm. This is how fair they were. So it's a, it's a very important topic and we need to basically have the, the patience to, to stay away from such an evil thing. I mean, no. Well, Uthman, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. How you doing, brother? Which country are you calling us from? I'm calling from Nigeria. MashaAllah. Go ahead, Athi. Yes, uh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, considering a situation where, for example, a person had had a very bad uh, business relationship with him, with somebody, and then he doesn't like the attitude of that person, and he came home and uh, maybe to, uh, told his wife about this to, uh, the, the person's attitude, is that considered a bad biting? Mm. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful yes. question, mashallah. The first question relating to the topic tonight, yeah. alhamdulillah, Rafa, I mean, uh, so brothers and sisters, we continue to receive your questions in this extended discussion segment at 002 248 or 249, inshallah, or through Skype at huda underscore TV, share your thoughts. Um, tell us also your personal stories when it comes to backbiting, uh, maybe uh, faults of your own, or maybe if someone had backbitten you, what you should do also. We're going to talk about that in just a bit, inshallah. Since our brother Arthman, um, he has a problem at work. Uh, he mentioned specifically, you know, that he's dealing in a business with a person and that person deals in riba or there was some sort of riba transaction. Nevertheless, um, you know, he, he goes home, he talks to his wife about it and obviously, you know, maybe he's mad about the situation that happened on that day. Uh, and he's telling his wife bad things about uh, that person. Mm. Uh, I think this is something that we can all relate to. Right. And this is one of the dangerous means to fall into backbiting between a husband and a wife. Mm. Because uh, the wife is very close to the husband and the same thing for the husband to the wife. So there's no formalities basically. Mm. So the person would just get everything out. Right. And we have to be careful. We cannot backbite 
uh, and talking to the wife about someone at work, unless it's a general situation that the wife doesn't know the person, uh, have no idea whatsoever who's that person, and you're talking in general. Mm. A person did that to me, and the other person does not know who he is, there's no harm whatsoever. It is without mentioning the person's name. Without mentioning the person's name, and without any means that the person would understand who's that person. Because what if you, you say my boss? Uh, still a person should avoid it. Mm. Unless there's a benefit, a person would get an advice, for example. But we have to be careful, uh, to the extent of which it's not permissible to backbite your own sons and daughters. Really? Uh, right. Let alone, for example, the parents and fathers and mothers, mm. the dead people, we cannot talk evil about them, you know, unless, again, there's exceptions. And yes. that's why the exceptions keep coming. Okay, right. They keep <laughs> coming and we keep pushing them away right. because we don't want all of us, you know, to, to fall into the exception category. Right. We'll talk about them, inshallah, as right. we get closer to the end of the episode, inshallah. Right. Brother Muhammad from Jordan, Salaam alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam. Kayf al hal? Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Ameen. Go ahead, brother. Uh, brother, I have a couple of questions about backbiting. Please. Uh, first, if uh, the Sheikh can uh, clearly define what constitutes the backbiting. All right. What's the second question? Uh, uh, the second question is, uh, we talk about the leaders in our countries and we see them doing all the wrong things. And mm. if we do talk about them, is it, uh, it comes in the bracket of uh, backbiting? Beautiful questions, mashallah. Zakallah <laughs> khayyam. Um, I guess we're moving closer and closer to the exceptions, but uh, I'm going to delay the answer to that question just a bit because it's also relating to exceptions. Um, I want us to, to, to put ourselves in the shoes. We're, we're addressing right now the person who was doing the backbiting. Mm -hmm. okay? Let us also talk about the other side. If you have been backbitten, how should you react to, to such a situation? Should you um, feel that, okay, now I can backbite the other person now? This person talked about me bad first, so now I have the right, even Islamically. We say Islamically, I have the right to answer that person, uh, to talk you know, to uh, the same group that he talked to about me. I can talk to them about, uh, about him so I can clarify my own situation. Uh, also psychologically, how should a person who's been backbitten deal with the situation? Because sometimes, uh, especially if it comes from a close person, it causes a lot of emotional pain. Of course, and it depends on the situation. But in general, the, the, the rule is injustice should not be opposed by another injustice. So we cannot oppose a sin by another sin. So uh, it depends. If a person heard that someone had uh, backbitten him, what should he do? First, he has to make sure that it's true. Mm. And as Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah, he said something in the meaning of which, go and ask the person, clearly and simply, did you say such and such about me? If that person says, no, I didn't say it, say, Jazakumullah khairan, sorry for what I did, don't tell him, but I have a tape and I have this, don't oppose him with that. That means he is some form of regretting or he embarrassed or whatever there is. Leave it at that point and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help. And seek rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if he did backbite you, you are basically getting rewards from his good deeds. Mm. And if he says, yes, I did, and he explains why, take it from him and don't take it further. Mm. So uh, early generations of Islam, some of them, when they hear someone that backbited them, they would take a gift for that person. And they would say, Jazakum khairan for those who would give us as a gift, their good deeds. They're basically giving you a gift. Yes. Uh, some of their good deeds are, are being given to you. So we should not oppose evil with evil, but at the same time, a Muslim has the right to defend himself. So to make sure and clear that he is not what the person uh, said about him, if it's a lie, if it's true, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy and to you know, eliminate the, the, the hatred in the hearts. Amen, Ya Rabbi. Zakallah khayyim. Sister Khadija from the UAE, UAE. Salaam alaikum. Alaikum salam. How are you, brother? Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Amin, sister. Um, actually, I was going to ask, um, I was going to mention something, but Brother Ibrahim just um, cleared it up for me now. It, it was just a situation where um, my children, they visit um, their, uh, their father, my ex-husband, and um, his wife actually backbites me, uh, backbites about me quite a lot. Mm -hmm. So it's been happening for a few years now, and I try not to, um, I try not to say anything about their father or his wife because I don't want it to affect my children psychologically. Mm -hmm. I don't want them to feel like they're in between, um, between our situation and they feel like they have to choose 
Right. That's very wise of you, how Masha Allah. It does um, affect me. Um, and how do I deal with with that? I mean, I've tried to be patient, but there are times where sometimes I do get really. Um, of course. Uh, I mean, obviously, it affects, affects, a lot, it affects you emotionally and psychologically. Yeah, sure. This affects me yeah. a lot. And secondly, uh, the other thing I want to say is that I do tend to stay um, at home. I don't tend to go out, especially in the community, especially with women, because mm-hmm. women tend to gossip a lot, uh, mm-hmm. especially when we have coffee mornings, and this is quite normal. Um, so I try to avoid those situations because um, I don't want to put myself in that situation. Mm-hmm. Um, coffee mornings and outings with friends because, you know, that biting does take place. I want to ask um, Sheikh Ibrahim, uh, how to handle a situation if, you, if you're in a group with sisters and one sister starts biting another sister mm. without putting that sister down in front of everybody? How would you handle that situation and, you know, kind of advise and Beautiful, beautiful question, mashallah. Mashallah, yeah, uh, subhanAllah, the questions that brothers and sisters are asking are uh, opening up a lot of uh, avenues for us, inshallah. Yeah. Sister Adila from Saudi Arabia, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, how are you? Alhamdulillah, what I mean, sister, go ahead. Alhamdulillah. Um, I have a question, um, I hope um, I'll be able to get some uh, clarity on this. Bidhinla, go ahead. Um, I, I'm born a Muslim and um, obviously I, uh, I have a very strong Iman and there's no question about that. But I need to know when it comes to Shaitan, I need to know if, if you have a good Islamic foundation and you have a mind and a sound mind, mm-hmm. how, how do you know when it is your mind um, not telling you properly what to do and when when is it that you really know that it is the influence of shaitan mm. so uh, when is it the nafs and when is it the shaitan I think Ramadan yes. uh, Ramadan is a good indication for that yes. Yes, I need, and then uh, the other question I need to know is yeah. um, I don't know the exact wording but according uh, to our belief as Muslims um, when it comes to Ramadan um, the shaitan is in chains, mm-hmm. right? Am I right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, um, how, how do the we explain shayotins. that? How do we explain that? Yeah, how do you explain that? Okay. Well, how, how is it that shaitan is in chains during Ramadan, but not other times? Mm-hmm. And when do we know when, we, when our decisions are influenced by shaitan? Beautiful. Whereas yeah. we are our sound mind, and we have a good fun, uh, Islamic foundation. Zakallah okay. khairan. It makes, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, the two questions are interrelated. Inshallah, we'll answer them. Brother Sayyid, Assalamu alaikum. Yes, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum, Assalamu alaikum. How are you, brother? Ramadan Mubarak to you. Ramadan Mubarak to you. Zakallah khairan. Brother, I have uh, actually uh, three questions. Uh, one about backbiting and other about Ramzan and Zakah. Okay, go ahead, inshallah. We'll try, we'll try to get as many answers as possible, inshallah. Yeah. Uh, regarding the bike biting, uh, if, uh, for example, I'm uh, looking for a proposal from my sister for marriage, mm-hmm. and then I want to inquire about the uh, person, uh, the, uh, the man, then if somebody says bad about his habit or whatever, so it does it come under bike biting or it is okay to uh, got your say question. I got your question, inshallah. Next one about Ramadan, right? Yeah, Ramadan, yeah. Mm-hmm. The Taraviyah, uh, sometimes <coughs> I need to pray at home because of some reason. So should I pray that uh, in a loud, loudly or silently? Okay, mashallah. Third question? Yeah. Uh, and the third question is, uh, uh, I'm constructing a house and then uh, it is just for me to stay or my family to stay there. So should i pay the zakat on that amount or is it uh, okay i mean uh, it's uh, so are you are you currently levi- living at that house no currently it's under construction okay. i'm not living in that house okay. but i'm intending to live there or uh, keep my family there okay inshallah beautiful question and the uh, uh, eid uh, right now i am in the uae and i want to go back to my country on eid mm-hmm. where they have started the ramzan uh, um, a day later um, than in UAE. One day, yeah, one day after that. So, 
what should i do should i continue 31 days of fasting there or i have to uh, stop myself uh, on 30th day and uh, celebrate the eid with them what what should i do what is a okay ruling zakallah khair what country are you from uh, i'm from india by the way mashallah barakallahu feek may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and all brothers and sisters in india inshallah zakallah khair brother said All right, so we have a lot of questions. I hope we do actually get uh, time to talk about the exceptions. Uh, let's begin with Sister Khadija. Uh, I think she is doing something that's very wise, mashallah. Even though uh, you know uh, her and her husband are divorced, he's married to another woman. She tries not to talk bad, uh, you know, about her about the dad mm-hmm. in front of the children, mm-hmm. uh, even though that the dad's wife is talking bad about her. But this is affecting her psychologically. It goes back to a point we were talking about earlier. Um, your thoughts for her? She should first seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She's doing the right thing, and that is not to oppose the injustice with injustice, the sin with the sin. Uh, if it's definitely, it hurts. And that's why we need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're getting rewards, inshallah ta'ala, by being patient. And at the same time, defend yourself if it's, if it's lies. You can defend yourself in the proper way, uh, so that you push away that evil from you. But keep on like that. You have a support and help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as long as you are being patient and seeking rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And definitely the good would never be uh, uh, terminated. You would see the outcome of it and mm-hmm. you would be rejoicing and happy as a result of that. Her second question was uh, her statement as a woman, not no. mine, that women in general tend to gossip a lot. إِلَّا مَنْ رَحْمَ رَبِّ Okay, uh, except those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mer- has mercy on and, and they don't get involved in that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them. Right. Um, So uh, she's in a situation where uh, she's gathered with a group of sisters, maybe even at a masjid. Right. You know, back, people are backbiting inside of, right. of a masjid, no. subhanAllah. Um, maybe the ayah about backbiting <coughs> that we're going to talk about in just a bit, as we said, right. we explain more. The shaykh is saying it in the, in the salah, and some sisters are sitting to the side, right. and they're backbiting. Right. So um, she sees the situation. Obviously, one sister is doing the job of, of backbiting, and she's talking to the group. How can she... You know, do al-amr bil-ma'roof and al-nahya al munkar how she can enjoy good and forbid the evil right. with also keeping in consideration the feeling of that sister without wanting to lose her or to embarrass her publicly. Right. Very good. It's not about enjoying good and forbidding evil. Backbiting, if one person is backbiting and there's a group of people sitting hmm. and if they don't do anything about it, the backbiting sin is in all of them. They're all part of it, not just the one that said it. They're all equally falling into the same sin. No exception. Really? No difference between the one that is saying things and the one that is listening to it. That means the person listening to this has to say something, has to do something. And that is to defend the honor of that Muslim that is being backbited. Yes, that might put down the person that is backbiting, but what about that Muslim that is not present? How mm-hmm. about his honor and dignity that is being humiliated at that, uh, you know, in this context? So saying it in a nice way, that this is not permissible, this is backbiting, or saying that brother or this sister... I know anything and I know everything good about her, you know, this is, you know, things like this. Mm-hmm. To defend the honor of that Muslim, it's a must. If a person fear for his own life, for example, that, that might hurt him, then to leave from that gathering, and if a person says something and they don't accept it, then a person has to leave that gathering, and there's no exceptions also. There's verses in the Quran that talks about that, which mm-hmm. is very important. And we have to have the shyness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before a- anything else. And again, don't forget that there is an honor and dignity of a Muslim, Muslim that has been put down as a result of this backbiting. Jazakallah hmm. khair. No. We have a phone call from Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, sir. How are you doing, brother? Brother Haidar, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, sir. Uh, my question to you is uh, uh, very simple. What's the main difference between gossiping mm-hmm. and backbiting? Excellent Because question. Because gossiping in the sense, it doesn't hurt anyone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey, beautiful question. Zakallah khair. All right, we'll go in order, inshallah, and uh, we await more of your phone calls within that ta'ala. We uh, decided to not take a break, not play any promos in the middle, and we're going to continue for the full hour with you within that ta'ala because we want to answer as many of your questions as possible. So feel free, inshallah, to continue giving us a call at 002-0238-555-248 or 249 or through Skype at Huda underscore TV. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this program of benefit within that ta'ala. Sister Adila is talking about uh, the shaitan. How do we know if we have a good Islamic foundation? How can we differentiate if a certain sin that we do, and maybe especially a sin that we insist on doing, is coming from the evil of our own nafs, 
our own uh, soul or uh, if it's coming from the shaitan. Uh, first, the outcome of it, it really doesn't matter. What matters is that we need, to, we need to know what is right and what is wrong. And anything that is inside of us, a whisper or a need that is evil, we need to stay away from that and seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do what is right. Mm. That's what's more important. But the question is valid. And as the ulama, they say, usually if it's something related to the nafs, to our own self, it's something that is very strong and it keeps coming. It's not just a whisper that comes and then it goes. It's something that has a, a, a nagging feeling in yourself. Right? For example? For example, a person, his weakness, uh, for example, when it comes to lowering the gaze, right? And he is struggling with that so much. It's a disease that is present in his heart, mm. right? That he needs to work on this. Shaitan, on the other side, when it comes to the whisper, he just throw a whisper and goes away, right? And it doesn't matter whether it's this sin or that sin. So one sin here, one sin there, right? And a person would take the whisper either to build on it or to push it away, right? But mm. the thing that is within our own self, something that keeps on coming and keeps on insisting and, and pushing us to do what is, what is wrong with the help definitely of the shaitan. Shaitan makes it worse. So it goes, you know, interrelated and it's very difficult sometimes and complex for a person to figure out which is which. Mm. But definitely the shaitan is working on both. The whispers and making sure that the disease is within our own self, he will make it worse and make sure that you don't take the path of cure. But the, 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 the means of shaitan is all weak when it comes to strong iman and doing what is right. We'll continue answering the second part of our question. Ramadan, uh, the shaitan in Ramadan, what's his role or right. where is he right now? Uh, let me just take a few more phone calls, inshallah. First, uh, Sister Samira from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, Sister Samira, the phone line has been cut off. Try to give us a call back, inshallah. Sister Maryam from Gambia. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Um, yes, sister. I have two questions. Mm -hmm. Hello? Yeah, I can hear you very well, sister. Go ahead. Okay, my first question is, I, I converted about two years ago to Islam. Sorry, and yeah. I still have problems with my family. So I kept talking about them to my husband, like my aunt and my mom and my grandmother. And um, I kind of let that vibe. And so how can I, how can I cope with that? That and not talk to my husband about it without bad advice in my family. And the second question is, if you see like celebrities or magazines, for example, if somebody reads a magazine and comes to me and tells me, oh, this guy or this girl is drunk or is drinking or is in drugs and stuff, how is that bad as well and how do I deal with that? Mm. When you talk about celebrities, I, like, person, uh, when you talk about celebrities, are you talking about movie stars or what kind of celebrities? Yeah, because I have some friends who come up to me and they will tell me about, oh, this movie star is drinking and whatever, is so and so, and I'm just like, I don't want to hear about that because it's bad biking, but the person is like, no, it's in magazines, but then I tell the person that magazines are also like a source of bad biting as well. Mm. Well, it is, yeah, but I guess the, the better thing is not to talk about these people at all, <laughs> whether, whether it's true or whether it's not true. Yeah. What do you think, Sheikh Yeah, It's true. But uh, this is one of the exceptions if a person is committing a sin openly. Mm. But again, it has to be a true thing, not lies. If it's a true thing that a person is openly committing a sin, like a movie star, for example. If a person backbite, say something that he's already doing it publicly, this is not backbiting, actually. Mm. But what's the benefit of saying it? Uh, this is what you said. There's no need for us to talk about it. But when it comes to backbiting, this is not backbiting because he's openly committing the sin and it's something that has been shown by millions and millions. So when a person talk about it, it's not considered to be backbiting. Mm. But uh, it's better not to talk about it at Definitely. all, right? Better not to even, Definitely. not to even like, to act like these people don't really exist. Right. That's how I really and try to And reading all it. these types of magazines and things, it's all filth and it's nonsense and it's waste of one's life. Yeah, uh, My dear brothers and sisters, we have a few pictures for you relating to backbiting. Sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words uh, and we don't have time to say thousands of words in, in this hour. So maybe these will have some messages for you. We were supposed to play them during the break, but since we don't have a chance to, to, to take a break, 
we'll uh, go ahead and uh, you'll see them right now inshallah on uh, on your screen uh, let me take uh, sister Samar uh, from the UAE in just a moment inshallah but uh, if you can please hold on with us so we can answer more questions uh, sister Adila is talking about the shaitan in Ramadan briefly now, inshallah the Prophet ﷺ said that in the month of Ramadan was fit of the shaitan meaning that the devils the fierce and one uh, narration maradatu shaitan the fierce of the devils that are being chained. The major shayateen. The major ones, not all of them. Mm. So there's some shayateen, so there's some whispers, but it's weaker than uh, and other than Ramadan. And plus our own desires comes in place. So there's still whispers, there's still evil present in the month of Ramadan because of the presence of some of the shayateen. But it's made easy for us to be steadfast because the major ones are being chained. How they are chained, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Some people actually, they say they're not chained, it's just a metaphor. We have to be careful and warned not to fall into this danger route. The Prophet ﷺ said they are chained. We say yes, we listen and we obey. They are chained. How they are, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. We have about three minutes left in the episode. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll go ahead and take uh, the last call. And I apologize for not taking more phone calls from brothers and sisters. Please forgive us. I'm also not sure if we'll be able to answer all the questions. If not, then uh, we'll try to answer them uh, next time. Sister Summer from the UAE. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa uh, Yes, my question is that uh, it happened to me once I was in a room and uh, somebody didn't know that I was there and was backbiting about me. So, like, what should I have done in that situation? And is that backbiting or no? Hmm. You got the question, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, Zakallah Khayyim, Barakallah Fi. All right, uh, Brother Sayyid. Uh, I apologize, we have uh, quite a few questions, we'll answer the one relating to, to the topic tonight. Um, someone's proposing to uh, his sister and is inquiring, no. uh, so, you know, someone, he's inquiring so someone is telling him something bad about the person proposing. This is one of the exceptions and if you allow me very quickly, Please. there are six exceptions to backbiting but we have to be careful these are exceptions. Uh, one of which is a person uh, being uh, injustice committed against him and he has to go to the court, for example, and say somebody stole money from me. This is not backbiting. Uh, someone that is warning others from someone else, one of which is what is mentioned in the question. A person is proposing. You need to know what is evil more than what you want to know when it comes to good things. So actually it's a manna, it's a trust that you have to say all the evil things that you know about that person to warn because this is a lifetime commitment. Mm. So it's not backbiting. It's a mandatory thing to say what is evil if you know anything about that person. Uh, uh, if a person is known by his name to be a limping person, whatever there is by his name, it's okay. If it's uh, helping to remove an evil, it's okay to, to say something about removing an evil. Come and help me to uh, stop that person from committing that sin. It's permissible in that regard. And someone that is openly, publicly committing sins, it's okay to backbite such a person. Uh, so these are the means that the ulama they mentioned, but again, these are exceptions, mm. right? And not, nothing whatsoever would bring an evil if it's the order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in that case, yes, it's a must that a person would say the truth at a pers about a person that he knows if he's proposed to someone to make sure that they know everything clearly about that person. So that's yeah. the first thing. That's the yeah. first exception. We have five more yeah. and uh, we have five seconds left in the right. episode. So I guess we won't be able to get to them today, but inshallah yeah. we'll try later. Um, let me finally take uh, the, the question of my brother, because this is such a hot topic. My brother was asking about when we talk about the leaders, especially yeah. of Muslim countries, who may not be righteous, uh, who may be openly committing sins or openly committing injustices. Your thoughts about that? If it's something that has been done publicly and a person is saying something that has already been done publicly, this is not considered to be backbiting. But again, what's the benefit of it? And the other thing is that we have to be careful not to cause fitting and tribulations in the country by spreading rumors and talking evil about things like that so that people would uh, cause bloodshed and things like this. We have to be careful. But again, anybody that do something openly, publicly, and you say that he did this and you saw this and it's done on television, for example, that's not considered backbiting. Mm -hmm. But people talk about their personal lives, things that is not done publicly, this is definitely, he's a, he's a Muslim, he's honored, he's dignified, that person should protect the honor and dignity of any Muslim. 
Zakalakhain. Warakallahu feek. Dear brothers and sisters, unfortunately we ran out of time, so I apologize for not being able to answer the remainder of your questions. It really pains me because I, I love for anybody who called to be, an, to be able to answer their questions. But please forgive us. If your questions are uh, related to fatawa questions, please try to call, ask Khuda tomorrow, inshallah. I believe it's at 5 p.m. Mecca time. Uh, give them a call and maybe you can get some of your questions answered. And uh, if not, then inshallah, give us a call again on Sunday on our program, One Step Closer. Sheikh Ibrahim, you've been with us for the past three days. So uh, we've made you very tired, no, especially in the month of Ramadan. Uh, uh, I know uh, you'd like to focus on, on your ibadah. But as you know, of course, this is also a great form of ibadah because people's hearts are open yeah. in the month of Ramadan. Easy, may Allah, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you greatly, inshallah. Uh, my dear brothers and sisters, thank you so much for being with us here this evening. We'll see you again on Sunday night. Jazakumullah khayran. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Where's my place in your great plan, oh Lord? Help this man, help this man.